Hey guys, what's going on? I'm Mark Sparks. Welcome to the Men's Room Interview Series. Today I have with me Ben Ezra. Ben? Pleasure to be on here. Man, pleasure to have you here. Now before we get started, let's take a look at what Ben's done. Becoming fed up with being a guy who lacked self-confidence and had no date, Ben decided to turn his life around. He studied self-improvement and personal development and in two years completely changed everything. Since then, Ben has become very successful with women and wrote the book Modern World Dating to help men understand the dynamics of every interaction with a woman. He now works as a dating coach, working one-on-one -on -one with men and teaching them the WMD model. Ben joins us today to share the model with us and how we can implement it into our pickups. Ben, so, uh, I mean, you got, you got quite the, the system. Yep. Um, give me the philosophy, what's that about? It's just, it's simply a guide. It's a plan slash guide to get somebody from point A to point B. And then no matter what level they're currently at, mm -hmm. like you could already be pretty good with women or you could be like horrible with women, extremely shy as I was. Like couldn't even approach women. I couldn't even approach people at a certain point in my life because I, I had a fear of approaching people because I, I went through a few hard experiences throughout my life. Mm -hmm. And especially when I was a teenager, I had a very dramatic ex life experience that I had to deal with. And for two years, I kind of put myself away from people. I was depressed and I, I was in my basement, which was my, my room was in my basement. I'd stay there, I'd call it like, people used to call it, get out of your cave already. You're always there, I'd be on my computer all day watching TV and that was my life every day. And I stayed away from people for so long that I accustomed this fear of, interacting with people, not, not, like, not even talking about women yet. I just had a fear of like, interacting like this. Just I was talking. Be totally frightened, to, especially to be on camera, or to be on any interview. I wouldn't even, couldn't think of that. Right, so what did the switch? If you wanna change anything in your life, if you wanna achieve anything, it starts here. It starts in the mind and that's a key that a lot of guys these days, they skip when they're trying to meet women or become successful with women. Mm -hmm. They jump straight to the techniques. And they're like, okay, give me your big, best pickup line. That's the biggest question that people ask me. Most of the time, they're like, what's your best pickup line? And there isn't any best pickup line because what you say doesn't really matter in, in a sense. It, it does, but it's a small part of it. A lot of it comes from what you think. Your actions and with your thoughts are more important than your actions. Um, but really, it's, it all comes down to what you think about. And what you think about all comes down to what you focus on. So if you're focusing okay. on negative stuff, then you're gonna have negative thoughts and it's gonna come off in your body language and how you interact with people. And well see, so and I think this is awesome because you're talking about the psychology of this, but I'm, what I wanna be able to do is, you know, guys are watching and going, okay, well I'm in the basement right now. Mm -hmm. And there's something that you did, there's a specific strategic steps that you must have took. So what took you through that thing um, from there to here? Well, it was, there was a couple of things. It was first understanding how the mind works, mm -hmm. understanding how to learn. First of all, I, I never liked learning in school. I always hated, I hated school growing up. I was always a troublemaker, a class clown. That was my way of getting my feeling of significance. Um, right. But once I found out that there's this other kind of world of learning about how your mind works and how you can achieve success and anything you want and how you can achieve things into your life, that's when I started learning about the power of focus, the power of positive thinking, goal setting. I actually had this, I sat down and I wrote down all the goals of everything that I wanted to achieve a year from now, a few months from now, five years from now, even 10 years from now. Mm -hmm. I sat down and every day I even meditated about the kind of person I wanted to become. And I kind of played these videos in my head about the kind of cool person I wanted to become, be able to approach any woman and attract her and then date her. And, and I did that day after day after day. And it, it wasn't one thing, it was a whole process of things that I had to do. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, it's taking action is one of the most important things you're gonna have to do. Like knowledge Until, equals right. power, but if you don't put it into action, then it's just knowledge left in your head. It's gonna go stale in your head and it's never gonna get anything out of it. So right. as soon as you learn something, you have to take immediate action. And it took me personally about one, a year, a year and a half to kind of get comfortable with my psychology and get to the point where I was able to 
really grasp a lot of the ideas that I was studying and learning. Mm -hmm. And then when I did get to that point, I was able to interact with people better. I, was, I had more confidence. I had more motivation. I was inspired more. And, but I still wasn't that successful with women because I, I was focusing just how to get to a certain point of confidence in my life and just to understand my psychology. But I still sucked with women. So then I started to focus more on, OK, how do I get how do I become successful with women? Now, I learned how to be confident in situations. I learned the, the art of being relaxed in certain situations, of just taking you know, the art of a deep breath. It's something that simple that I learned. That it was, it's amazing how much it could do for you if you just like take a few minutes before approaching a woman or before uh, something that you, you usually get nervous doing. Mm -hmm. Just take a few deep breaths, and you could really relax your whole physiology and your whole body. Once I learned this stuff, I focused more on how to use it towards women. And I, I actually, that's when I actually started approaching women. I got rejected like crazy. Like the first few months of doing this, I had a 90% rejection rate. So how many rejections did you take? Oh, I have no idea. I have hundreds, maybe even more. I don't even remember. I'd approach women. And, and the thing that really boggled my mind was society um, lets people believe that if you're decent looking and you're a tall guy, which you're tall and I'm six foot two, so I'm a right. pretty decent yeah, height. Yeah, we're in a different, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and I've been complimented on my looks as well growing up. So I figured I'm, I guess I'm decent looking as well, according to society. Mm -hmm. and, but yet I, I still wasn't able to attract women. So I was like, okay, what's, what's going on here? Like something must, must be wrong. And I began to think that something was wrong with me, maybe. Mm -hmm. So whatever, I just like put that aside, and I kept on approaching, and I kept on approaching, and slowly, after all these rejections, and I, I started learning little techniques of like how the tone of my voice when I speak to women, or the, the way my body language is, and the words I used, and all these little things. After a whole bunch of rejections, I kind of tried to take the lesson from each. If it didn't go well, I go home, I'd sit down and I'd kind of go over everything in my head and try to see what I could try differently for the next time. Mm -hmm. Like maybe I approach one woman and I'm like, like uh, I used to go up to women and say, hey, sexy. And uh, they'd look at me, they're like, like, excuse me? Hey, sexy, you just approached me in the, like in the middle of, like, get out of here, loser. <laughs> like, what's, hey, sexy. And back then, I used to think, like, I'm complimenting that was now. That was prime stuff. Yeah, that was, that was the best <laughs> stuff I had back then. Was, and it wasn't working for me, so. So can you, guys, you, can you use that now? If you wanted to walk up to a woman and, uh, and, and start now a I could. Now I like to believe that I could use anything. Right. We live in the modern world now, and this world is so fast-paced that what worked yesterday doesn't work today. And... There's a different kind of way of thinking that you have to adapt to be successful in this day and age because with all the technology and the internet and mm -hmm. social media and all this, these abilities to communicate so rapidly, have, has, it's, the whole dating game has changed completely because... Sure. Do you think the, the game itself has changed or do you think that just the way that... Like, well, have people's needs changed or have people... Is that what you're saying? Or are you saying um, more not, not the way so we much. The convey way we, stuff? The way we go about uh, attracting women and communicate on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. It's just that there's so much more competition, especially like men's room TV and the game and all these other books and- We're not competition. <laughs> We're to help and teach. Exactly, but I, I mean, there's more competition for men out there who are learning this stuff. And the guys who aren't learning this stuff, like they got to step their game up pretty quickly because guys in the past five years or 10 years have been really studying this stuff. And, it's, it's, it's great, it's very important that they, they should study, every guy should study this stuff. But the thing is, there's gonna be a lot of guys left behind who aren't studying this stuff or never heard of this stuff yet. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's an issue, because they gotta really step up their game, because there's guys learning all these step-by-step -step methods, techniques, they're getting women like, by following a few steps. And, uh, you, you just gotta wake up and notice that Attract the women this day and age get approached so many times. It's, mm -hmm. it's crazy that they, when they go outside, they walk outside in the street. They're going to get approached. They're going to guys are staring at them everywhere they go. They get approached that in their work, like guys, right. uh, their colleagues or people that work with them. They like try to hit on them, and 
uh, restaurants, clubs, obviously they're going to get approached all day. But the thing is, ever since the internet grew so much and Facebook and all these social media uh, avenues, mm -hmm. not only are they getting approached outside, but they're even getting approached when they're home. They're getting approached Poke. when they're sleeping. Poke. They're getting <laughs> poked. And they're getting messaged like, hey, sexy. They're using my old lines. Hey, sexy. Hey, beautiful. Online. And right. Some guys actually have game and they send better messages. And like, you, you, that's why I'm saying you have to step up your game because if you want that woman, you have to get her to choose you over all these other guys that are approaching her throughout the day. Right. And once you learn this stuff, that's, that's pretty easy. It's like, it's that, I mean, and you know, take your phrase, it's get, get, getting down to business. So let's get back, let's get down to the let's get, nitty let's, gritty. The nitty gritty. The, this is the MWD model. Pretty much this model was designed to help the reader understand the, what goes on during an interaction, mm -hmm. like a successful interaction with a woman. And this is kind of the process that I used to use subconsciously in my mind. Okay. Consciously and subconsciously in the beginning when I, when I spent like two years just dating every day, going on a, another day with a woman, sometimes three in a day where I'd go through all these phases. But it's important to go out with many women. Sure. Because you have to, you want to learn this stuff, you want to get comfortable. So when you do find that special one, you're going to be ready. It's getting back to being prepared mm -hmm. in a sense. So Good that's point. why go out with as many as you can, date, go out with a woman, date her friends, date her friend's friends, let them see you. It's a lot of guys think too, like, oh, this girl, I, I can't date her friend because her friend knows I dated her. It doesn't matter. The, the more women see you out there, they see you dating women, they're going to think. They're like, well, what's this? This guy might be, must have something going on for him, like all these women he's with. He's with the new women all the time. They must see something in him. And it just creates this interest and it's not something you have to worry about. But anyway, right. well, there's pretty much four main elements to this model. And the first one is the congruency factor. Okay. What that pretty much means is just being congruent with, with who you are when you approach a woman. Because if you're not congruent, if you're not real in a sense, then women will pick up on that immediately. Maybe the real, me being congruent is like, hey, what's up? What up, sexy? What up, shorty pants? Or, Whatever, just, right. Whatever, you just, women could sense it. They're like detectors when it comes to this stuff. They can sense if you're being incongruent with who you are and it, it doesn't work towards your benefit mm -hmm. at the end of the day. So that's the number one important element to the NWD model. The number two one is comfort level. And that's pretty much being able to build up a woman's comfort level throughout the interaction, which is also very important. Right. The second one is attraction level. That's similar to comfort level, just as important. But instead of building comfort, you're building the attraction level towards the woman throughout the interaction. And the third one is sexual compatibility. And what that means is the more comfort and attraction level you build throughout an interaction, mm -hmm. the greater the chances of sexual compatibility. Uh, the more that will grow. You see, it's like... A it's double. So can up. one grow without the other in your uh, model? I was just going to get to that. Oh. It could. It could grow with one without the other, but the okay. problem is, you know, you've heard of the friend zone, ending up in the friend zone, <laughs> or the nice guy. I call it the nice guy syndrome in my book. It's the guy who does all these things to seek a woman's approval and uh, be extra nice. And the reason why they end up in that friend zone or in that nice guy category is they completely, they only focus on building comfort mm -hmm. throughout an interaction and they completely ignore building attraction level. So you don't want to do that, or unless you want to be in that friend category. Right, unless you're just looking for sure, a friend. Sure, if you're looking for a friend, that's cool. And I've done that many times too. Open Sometimes up your you might want to only do that. You want to focus on building comfort, but if you want to get into a sexual relationship mm -hmm. with a woman, then you don't want to just focus on that side. What are a couple of ways I think, you know, you would build comfort? some comfort with somebody? The easiest way is, number one, not to come off not to come on too strong. And number two is to make them laugh, to make them smile, to make them laugh. Just give them these feel good emotions and show them that you're not, you're not coming on too strong. You're not coming, you're not approaching them to immediately get into their pants. And just the personality, the status you convey with your body language. Like if you're just chill, you're all comfortable back, immediately they're gonna feel more comfortable too. Right. Cause it's, it's kinda, you're not looking like, hey, Hey, <laughs> hey, how are you? Can I, can I yeah, guess? Can I? 
<laughs> you're not coming up in their Pre face. And they're going to be like, whoa. I'm gonna, that's but then not the other, building code. Right, right. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, that, that would be doing the opposite. So now getting to the attraction level. Attraction level, just like comfort, you can only focus on the building attraction and completely ignore comfort. But that's more of like the, the guy pretty much who's trying too hard to, to attract the woman. He's like acting in certain ways. He's driving that souped up car just to like kind of attract the woman to show off in a way. They're usually all the, the show off guys, they completely focus on building attraction and mm -hmm. they kind of ignore comfort. And I was, I used to be on both sides. When I, when I was studying this stuff, how to get better with women, in the beginning, I used to be Mr. Friend Zone. I used to be like, oh, the nice guy, hey, can I help you? Oh, you need help? Okay, sure, I'll help you move this. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a ride. I'll take you, I'll drop you off at home. Like, women used to call me for that stuff. So I'm like, hey, can you give me a ride? I need this. I'm like, sure, yeah, I'm right on that. And I used to think, well, oh, they're interested. They're attracted in me. And then they'd go out with this other guy. And I'd be like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> so I was here, and then after I really started studying this stuff, mm -hmm. I kind of figured, ah, so I'm not building attraction, so I should kind of throw that comfort stuff aside and like get rid of it. I don't need to build any more comfort. I don't want to be the nice guy. So now I started acting all like tough and say, hey, hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Like do whatever I want with women, say whatever I want. And I used to try to show off more. Mm -hmm. And I figured, you know, this is, this is how you're supposed to get women. And that's, that didn't work either because now women were laughing at me behind my back. Like it's not, it's, the guy who gets this cool car, they get all these cool material things to kind of show off. Like, right, hey, so hey, then what's a good way to build attraction? A good way to build attraction is just be charming the way you use your humor, to be charming the way you use your body language, uh, to be mysterious. So charming yeah. and mysterious, and I just want to break those words down because mm -hmm. to different people they mean different things. Sure. You know? Being mysterious could simply, like while you're talking to a woman, you just be vague in your conversation. Just don't tell her everything right away. She doesn't want to know your whole life story in the first five minutes of meeting her. So that's, just be vague. Say, if she asks you, what do you do? Oh, I'm in marketing or I'm in this. Or you can, uh, what I like to do is make up like funny answers for it. I'm like, I'm a Middle Eastern pimp. <laughs> I only deal with women with uni brows. Or, and then they just, something funny or something that will get them like, no, come on, really, what do you do? And just kind of guessing and that immediately will make you mysterious or kind of if you're outside, you're at a club or you're something, you're, you're talking to a woman, mm -hmm. stop talking to her for a second and just say, I'll be back and just walk away. Walk away for a bit and then come back after. And just that alone, that's like, where did he go? Who is this guy? What's he doing? That just creates mystery, you're not clingy, you're not needy, and you're not... That's hmm, that makes sense. And then charming, you're saying, like, give me some examples or, or steps. A guy comes to you and says, man, I want to be more charming. This girl's like charming guys. What would you tell me? Well, charming is... It's hard to kind of just give you a tip on how to be charming. It's something you become. It's, uh, well, even it's with yourself, like, what do you... You know, that you have charming It's just the way, the way you communicate, the way you're able to communicate nice things about women. Uh, without necessarily s saying them, like with using your words to kind of say them straight on. Um, there's this thing that I did for a woman. There was a woman that I was dating yeah. a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. and I really liked her. She was a, a really attractive. She was a great woman. And I kind of, after a few days of dating her, I kind of wanted, I felt like I wanted to do something special for her. Just something like special, something charming, something di different and creative. So I sat down for a couple of minutes and just went over a few things. I'm like, now that I learned all this stuff, I didn't want to do something to make it seem like I'm trying so hard to seek her approval or stuff like that, but I just wanted to do something nice for her. Mm -hmm. And um, I came up with something. First of all, let me tell you about a little moment I had with that woman. Uh, we were leaning against my car and just going over some, uh, just talking, laughing with each other, like how she was having a coffee just in a parking lot, we're just having a good time. And right. there was a little mini ginger ale can that was like crushed on the floor. It was kind of those mini ones that you'd find on planes. Yeah. 
And I found it odd seeing it on the, like some dr floor of a driveway crush because I've only seen them on planes before. I was just sitting there and she, I think she noticed it first or I noticed it or whatever. We started talking about it and I made some funny comment. I forget exactly what, but it was something along the lines of like, uh, like what is, was a midget here or something? Is that like <laughs> a drink for midgets? Or I don't remember exactly what I said. But it, the point is it, it made her laugh and we had this kind of shared moment, mm -hmm. which was a great moment. And uh, that's what I talk about, building these kind of moments where just you felt like it was just a, a good moment. She mm -hmm. was laughing and you were laughing and you were kind of connected in that shared moment that only lasted for maybe a, a few minutes. But anyhow, that was a moment that stood out throughout right. that whole interaction. And then, so I came up with this nice thing that a way that I could kind of get her to relive those feelings of that moment. And what I did was I went, I drove to the supermarket and I started looking for these little mini, mini ginger ale cans. And I'm like, I've never even seen them. I'm like, I'm wondering, do they even sell it in supermarkets? Mm -hmm. So I went and I actually did find a six pack case of mini ginger ale. And she loved, she loves cats as well. She loves cats and uh, she had a cat. And I found this little card like dial next to where they sold the ginger ale. They had like thinking of you cards. And it was like a little all fuzzy baby, little cute cat. And it was like something cute. And I took the card and in it, I wrote, when I saw this, I thought of you. And then under it, I wrote PS, just in case you run into any midgets. <laughs> and just, something like a little personal thing like that. And I attached the card to the cans mm -hmm. and I just drove by her house and I left it on her doorstep and I drove away. And then I got home and about a half an hour passed and she gives me a call and she's talking to me. She's like, hey, what's up? And I'm like, uh, not much. I'm like waiting for her to kind of mention, did she <laughs> find it, did she see it? And she's not mentioning anything. And then I'm like, where are you? And she's like, oh, I'm just walking home. So she was, as she was walking home, I'm like, oh, really, how far are you from your house? <laughs> I wanted to know where she is. So I, I, I kept her on the phone while she, she was walking towards it. And right. I, didn't, I didn't mention anything about it. And then as she was walking close, she was like, oh, I, I, there's, there's something here, one second. And then she was still on the phone with me as she's looking. And then as soon as she opened it, like, I felt her emotion through the phone. She was sure. totally, like, speechless. And she was, like, kind of stuttering to me. She's like, oh, like, oh. Wow. Oh my God. She's like, just, that's the nicest thing anybody has ever done for me. And I didn't, I spent a few minutes on it. I spent maybe $4 and then an, of an investment. And it was something so simple. It's not like I, I focused on taking her out to a $500 dinner or, or mm -hmm. showing off in some way and like buying her a big diamond necklace, some big thing, some big uh, piece of jewelry. I didn't, you don't have to do that. It was just something simple and thoughtful and immediately when she opened that all those great feelings of that moment that when we connected by my car that all came back in that moment that she looked she opened the card up and read read about it and i think most like there's a good chance that until today she keeps that card up in her room because mm -hmm. i know she used to even when i wasn't dating her anymore and uh, i was still maybe in touch with her sometimes i talked to her she was a friend and she told me that she still keeps it in her room, right. whenever she sees it, she immediately feels great. Right. She remembers that that feeling and how that was the nicest thing I've ever done. And it was well, that's rather charming. Oh uh, yeah, that's yeah. charming, and it was so simple to do. So what made you think of that? I mean, because there's and this is the point I think that we could take home mm -hmm. is there's steps that you took in your in your thought process clearly to make that impact on her. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to show women that you're interested in them, but you just don't want to go too far. You don't want to try too hard in the way you do it. And you don't want to use too many external things to do it. You want to use emotions. You want to kind of just get them to feel great, get them to smile, be positive around women all the time. And Right, their own vibe. Yeah, well, I, so I, I want to leave them, like I'm looking at all the eight phases. And yeah, so I'm going to go through them right now. Sweet. Number one, the approach. So the approach is just a way to get a woman to notice you, like come out of, let her know you exist. So at a grocery anyway. store, how would you get her? You could uh, walk, walk by her and just look at what she's looking at. I'm like, I would maybe say, you know what? Don't, don't take that. Don't take that. You, you, have, you don't want to become obese. 
okay, I've seen many people eat this and they became completely obese. Don't do it. Do yourself a favor. I'm trying to save you here. Right. <laughs> right. Just, that, just yeah. Something that just came top of my head yeah. without even thinking much about it. But that's just one way. How would it be different or, in a club? In a club, there's more noise and stuff. So you, you might like just get her to bump into you or bump, you bump into her and say, uh, like, hey, watch where you're going, lady. Like, hey, this shit ain't for free or these shoes are expensive. I don't know. You just come right, up with yeah. something or, or say, you bring say, come here for a second. Like you stand somewhere in a more quiet area and just say, come here. And she'll be like, what? Like, I just want to get you away from all that noise for a second and see what you were like. Or I just noticed you and want to see what you were like. And the basic guidelines you have to think of with the approach mm -hmm. is take action right away. Like, think quick, be quick, be witty as soon as you see the woman because she might not be there for too, too long. She might be there and she might leave and, or she might get on that subway and disappear and you might never see her again. So mm -hmm. act quick and just be confident and be comfortable. Don't overthink things too much. Don't overwhelm yourself. Just go out there and do it and eventually it's going to come natural. Right. Step two is uh, the chit chat. Chit chat. That's right after the approach. You immediately move into phase two. And in this, we want to get back to the mystery. You want to keep things vague. Uh, you want to keep things interesting. And you want to keep things like funny as well. Okay. Keep things uh, add vague, humor, charming. Yeah. You can talk about anything and just try to talk about something more interesting than the weather. I like to say, well, you, you, that could work for you as well. But a lot of, there's so many more interesting things that you can talk right. about other than, well, it's pretty cold, huh? I do want to get through your eight, so I'm gonna. Yep, closing the sale. That's pretty much getting the phone number, or email address, or exchanging number. They're giving the woman your phone number. It's pretty much that's that's all it is. It's getting the phone number, so you'll have a way to connect with them mm -hmm. again. And to give you an example of the three phases quickly, of uh, an example that I, I actually approached a woman recently. I was doing yeah, a, yeah. a live coaching session. Yeah. And it was a fairly nice day outside, and they actually had a whole bunch of different booths selling different items, different necklaces, and uh, like handmade jewelry, bracelets, and sculptures and stuff. And there was a whole bunch of people walking around and looking at the stuff. And it was two women that had caught my eye. They were like two really attractive women. So I approached them, and I, I just simply went behind her, and I, I tapped her on her shoulder. I'm like, hey, I'm like it's my cousin's birthday in two days, which it really was, a female cousin who's 21 years old. And I'm thinking of buying her a gift for her birthday. And I thought she might maybe like one of these things. And I'm not really too good when it comes to all this jewelry stuff and uh, what women necessarily would like. So I'd, I would really appreciate your opinion. And then at first she was like taken aback. She's like, okay, well, what's this guy want from me? I'm like, I'm just, I'm just I'm with my friend. Look, oh, wait. Yeah, like, what's yeah, this? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. She lowered her guard now because it's like, okay, I didn't say, hey, sexy. I didn't right. say, I didn't come up with one of those coming on too strong right away. Right. And she's, she immediately changed her whole expression and her whole, all of her, like, her body language changed and it was more open. She, and she gave me this big smile and she's like, oh yeah, sure, I, I'd love to. And she started asking questions about how old is your cousin and uh, does she usually, how does she dress usually? Does she dress right. Cassie? And so she, you're able to kind of grow exactly. that, yeah. And her and her friend, they both became interested and now like this blonde woman and is like, dark brunette, like really attractive women are both talking to me and they're like giving me all this, these tips and advice and sharing their knowledge with me. They're, and she's, one of them is grabbing me by the arm and like, come, come, come look at this one. Right. Take me to another booth and already there's like. On. So did you get a number? I actually said, thank you very much for your help. And I really appreciate it, but you know, I got to get back to my friend now. Um, I'm meeting my buddy and thank you very much. And I put one, leg back as if I was about to leave. And I did that purposely. That was like a thing that I talk about in my book, The Power of Body Language, showing them that after we had this like interesting, like I was humor, humorous, witty, charming with it, I, I gotta go, yeah. I'm, that, I'm ready to leave signal. And then the lady, she was like, ah, ah, ah. like I was about to ask for the number. I'm like, I was about to say, hey, you know, you seem like a pretty cool person. We should exchange numbers or give me a number. but. I didn't, I just did that purposely to see if she was gonna try to do anything or offer me anything, and she did. And it was, it worked out great because the guy was like two feet away, just like over, overlooking right. me doing all of this. And 
I put my leg back, and she was like, uh, uh, well, actually, uh, here, let me tell you what. She, she reached into her purse, she, she took out her phone. And she's like, uh, how about I give you my number, and if you're ever in the area, um, we could go out sometime. And I was like, it's like you know what? And I'm like, sure, sounds good. Like, right. You seem like, like an interesting person. And then maybe I made a joke, like, this relationship is moving too fast, young lady. <laughs> or something like that, just like. Just kept it light, kept it, I mean, you said you grew it and kept it, yeah, very, yeah, very real light, to who you are. And that's it. Nice. Phase four, the phone call, pretty much, you just want to keep it short, sweet, and to the point. You don't want to waste any time. Some guys stay on the phone for an hour, and they're like, they turn into the phone friend, the phone buddy, and <laughs> that's not what you want to do. The point of the phone call in uh, my eight phases is, the purpose of it is to simply book a date. Right. You know, you talk to the girl, you book a date, and that's it. Hang up the phone. You don't want to, the more you're on the phone, the more of a chance you're going to, you may screw up or <laughs> just get off the phone. It's, it's a woman's toy, not a man's toy. That's phase four. Phase five is the date, and this is probably going to be like the biggest, most time-consuming phase up until now, because this is the point where you're going to actually uh, go out with the woman. And... There's different f little stages within phase five, the date, that you have to go through. And the first one is a comfort builder stage, which, is, uh, which I used to do when, if you pick up the woman, if you're like driving your car and you're going to pick her up, take mm -hmm. her away, everyone, you use that short time frame to kind of focus more on building her comfort level with you because she doesn't know who you are. To a certain extent, you just want to make her feel comfortable. And right. I say make it a goal to get her to maybe laugh at least three times throughout that, the drive to wherever you're going. And then the second stage of that phase is the pre-evaluation stage, I like to call. And that's when I used to take women out to a coffee first before we actually move into the actual date. Because mm -hmm. that's a stage where I kind of pre-evaluate them. Instead of getting them, instead of me seeking their approval, I'm kind of showing them that I'm in charge and I'm asking you the question. I'm kind of like interviewing them in a sense. But right. I want to know what they have to offer me. Right. And this is the stage where I do that. And I also want to see... Is this a girl that I actually want to, a woman that I want to go out with for the rest of like the night? Do I want to spend the next few hours with this woman or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of the times I met a girl, I approached her, she seemed all great, and then I sat down with her for the coffee, and I'm like, you know what? This woman's kind of weird, and I don't want to spend the next few hours with her, and it was nice meeting you, and I enjoy the coffee, and that's it, and I take them back home, and that, that's the end of that. Or, but assuming that everything's cool, and you enjoy... Uh, you enjoy the woman's company, then from there, you actually go to the, to the, the real date. You could, you could have fun doing something. You, I used to take women to some like free art galleries. Right. I used to walk around with them and, and uh, talk about, like not be all serious and stuff, but it was just fun. I'm like, we're gonna go to this interesting place. It's gonna be nice and fun. I would go up to a piece of art and I'm like, oh, exquisite, exquisite piece of art. I'm Beautiful, isn't it? And I used to turn to her and she's like, ah, oh, yes. Yes, and she used to like try to like kind of just show play her that along, she's yeah. compensate. Yeah, like, yeah, she's playing along. She's playing the like, game. Yeah. yeah, she's playing. She's trying to attract you now because you you, you set it up in that right. situation. She's probably, she's just agreeing with your, what you're saying, and she's like, yes, it's uh, yes, I I do think it's a wonderful piece of art. Right. Well, so like, clearly, that, the date's going then, well. Right. The date's going on. And then I turn around and like look at her and say, really? I'm like, I think my three year old cousin could do a better job than this. And then I'd like maybe even give her a little light spank and. You want to make sure you built enough comfort and attraction before doing that. Yeah, I was using this. But I'm assuming that you did, and I've done that many times, and it worked great. I just like give her a little spank and then say, "That's for having a bad taste in our little missy." Wow. I just walked on to the next. So then, what comes after after that? The date's going well, and then so you take a boom. It's what happens next. Date's going well, and throughout that date, you want to use a little uh, a little line about a, a prop you have at home something to use as a transition to get to the home phase. Okay. And for me, it was also, I used to have this little paint easel that my uh, little cousin came over once to my house with my aunt. She brought him over and he had these toys he was playing while he was at my place and he forgot one little toy. It was a paint easel. So I used that during, we're in the art gallery, during the time that we're walking around, I might, I'll bring that up during the, like some point in the conversation. I'll just bring it up. I'll be like, actually, you know, my cousin left this paint easel at home, and it's my new, it's my new toy. I love it. I, I, I play around with it all day long, and, and then forget about it. Leave, like, just mention it. And then towards the end, you know, 
once everything is flowing, once everything's good towards the end of the art gallery, you, you just say, you know what? I'm like, I, I say we go, we go have some uh, painting, a painting contest or something, and, and she'll be like, like, what do you mean? I'm like, just let's go have fun. Let's go have fun and uh, have a painting contest, and the winner will get this. Or I used to make like a little uh, contract of rules. Rule number one: winner gets this. And rule number two. Right. So that was my transition to home, and now I'd be home with them. I'd be at my house, and we'd be playing with the paint easel. And now this is the, the home phase, phase six. That's where you want to up the intimacy part. You know, you want to be closer with her. You want to continue. You want to build interesting stories. Then from there, phase six, you want to get the, the kiss eventually. After you're being intimate, you're sitting close to each other. You want you know, her to feel your breath, which is a, a big important part. Feel your... Uh, let her feel your breath close to her and get her, get her aroused. It will even give her goosebumps a lot of the time. So really get her aroused before you kiss her and just, like, you can start slightly kissing her along the neck and just a few guidelines you wanna uh, make sure you're going by while you're kissing a woman. You don't wanna stick your tongue down her throat. Keep things slow, keep things intimate. And from there you just naturally have to transition to the bed or don't necessarily actually have to go to the bed. You can stay where couch, you are. The floor. The floor, there's many places, the couch, wherever you are to begin with, your, as long as you're somewhere comfortable. That's pretty much it. Take your time, don't rush it, and enjoy the moment, because you should really be grateful that you're in that moment. You've learned what you have to learn to get to that point, and just really try to be in that moment and enjoy it for what it is. Nice. I like that. It's the eight, the eight, the eight steps. Yeah, the eight phases and the phases. That's just it's just a guideline, but it's something that worked for me. And this used to be in my subconscious. And I recommend that people keep this model in their subconscious mind and in the back of their mind while they're approaching a woman, so they could you know, like kind of have like a little checklist in the beginning of, am I building enough comfort and how's my attraction level right. doing and how's this and where like you said, am I? Have a guide like, yeah, to you want to go right. simultaneously, kind of have a balance. Imagine there's a line in the middle and that's attraction and comfort. You don't want to build co comfort up to here and then attraction up to here. You're going to ruin that balance and might cause issues and that's pretty much it. The yin and the yang, the equilibrium. Yep. Within your system, within your yourself, mm -hmm. what would be your main thing that you'd say to a guy? You know, what's your first step, your action step from going from basement to you know, this is where I want to get to, this is where I am, I need an action step. So what's that action step? First action step would be to get out there and learn this stuff. And to really take control of your life, you're going to have to learn so much about your psychology, about the way you interact with people, just to, to kind of dedicate yourself to a life of constant, never-ending improvement, mm -hmm. like I said before. It's, that's really the most important thing when it comes down to it. It's not just find the best technique that works, find the best method, Get out there and take control of your life and take this part of your life seriously because you only get one life. And at the end of the day, if you don't do what you got to do to, to, get, to improve yourself in every aspect of your life, especially when it comes to this aspect of dating, attracting women, you don't want to end up alone. And women could add so much great value and joy to your life and magnify the human experience when you find a great woman. And at the end of the day, you don't want to just use this to get woman after woman into bed. Right. You want to use this so you can find the woman of your dreams and actually have a relationship with her and possibly spend the rest of your life with her. And I think that's a big and point is this is about living the life that you want to live yeah. as opposed to just getting ass. Yeah, exactly. And, you know? and I don't like to be looked upon as like the guy who just gets guys laid, gets guys laid, right. teaches them the eight phases. Yeah, once that's you get in the bed. That's what in this community. That's, that's not, what you, yeah. men's room community is based on, uh, you know, as you said, it's definitely development and, yeah. you know, striving to be better. And well, I like that, man. Like I said, thanks for coming out. Appreciate you, you being in the, in the men's room, the interview series. Thank and, you uh, very much. Like, you know, everyone knows where to find you when they need to. And uh, yep. I'm sure we'll be talking again. Guys, the men's room interview series here with Ben Ezra, Mark Sparks. We'll see you guys next time.